Okay, let's talk about the colour wheel. Um, right, so for a start, the colour wheel shouldn't be a wheel, it should look like this. Okay, because that's what the spectrum does. It, it, it comes out in a strip or in a bar. It, it doesn't come out as a wheel. And um, it's relation, the relationship of the colours next to one another is actually quite important. It was Isaac Newton in this, his great book on colour, who decided it would be a good idea to show us the colour wheel. And there's nothing wrong with that, it's, it's actually quite useful. It shows some interesting relationships. Most of all it shows us this, and that's where the red and the blue ends of the spectrum come together. And that shows us a relationship between the two ends of the spectrum. Um, but really the colour wheel should start here somewhere depending on whether you're working with light or you're working with paint. Well, we're working with paint, so I'm going to talk mostly about that, in which case it's probably around here somewhere. Um, this is my, my own colour wheel. It's a variation of this one, which is, you know, sort of thing you get in, a, in an art shop. Um, this, one's, this one's okay, um, but it's got too much emphasis on green. Uh, that just doesn't exist really in the spectrum. That really doesn't exist too much either. I mean, that, that's, that's better. It should be very bright, bright, bright green. Blue, green is, yeah, I, mean, I know it's backwards. Mine's backwards to that one, but that doesn't really matter either. The importance is the um, the relationship of these, these colours to one another and the amount of colours that are in it. Now, I've chosen these 12 colours because that is the... Um, the minimum set, if you like, of colours for mixing anything in the world, I think, pretty much. I mean, someone's probably going to go, oh yeah, but all about those neon colours. Okay, fair enough. There may be exceptions, but pretty much everything else that you're likely to ever paint is going to be achievable via this, this set of colours. Now, to make the, the, um, the wheel, you can, I don't know, draw around a plate or two or whatever, a plate in a jam jar, or if you haven't got, if you haven't got one of these... The protractor, this is very useful for um, dividing up the sections. Um, you definitely need one of those if you're going to do that, which is a, is that a pair of compasses. I'm not entirely, entirely sure why it's called. Why is it called a pair of compasses? It always makes me think of two of those things you find direction with, not something you draw a circle with. Why isn't it called a, a circle drawer or something like that? You know, it's probably not technical enough. Anyway, um, so you need one of those to, to draw your circles, or you can draw around whenever you like. Let's get to the paint, which is the important bit and the interesting bit. Now, all of these colours are colours that I've observed on the um, on the colour spectrum through light. So I've you know, basically beamed it through the window, through a spectrum on a wall, and taken a photograph and, and had a good think about what colours are in the spectrum and I've done more than that, I've actually looked at the internet, through the internet sort of massive archive of photographs, of spectrums and books and so forth and this is, this is the most balanced version that I can come up with of a colour strip that's been turned into a colour wheel. Again, um, on a daily basis this thing is so much more useful, okay? Because I sit that on the studio somewhere and I can go, oh, what's the next colour next to lemon yellow? Well, it's going to be warm yellow, next it's going to be orange. Going the other way, I can, I can sort of tell how light is going to shift through the different um, hues to achieve any colour I want. But, you know, the, the wheel's pretty, so you might want to, you might, <laughs> you might want to paint one of those. And this is it. And it's also a good opportunity for me to talk about the paints that, that you use to make the colours. Um, and they're the same the same paints as to make a strip. So if you want to make a strip and you haven't got any compasses and you just want to make a load of squares and paint those out, and then then you can you can use the same colours. Um, what's important to point out is that these these the colour any colour wheel is is typically made up of sections and the spectrum isn't, okay? Um, so there is no dividing line between green and lemon yellow. There, it, it just it just will turn one will inevitably blend into the other until it becomes somewhere in the middle. There will be lemon yellow, but there will be lots of variations and gradations of the, these these colours in between that. The the true colour wheel, or the true spectrum, 
has millions of individual colours. And apparently we can see um, up to 10 million individual colours. The human eye is capable of doing that, which is pretty cool. So when we talk about yellow, um, we're really grabbing sections of the spectrum. And so when you, when you talk about lemon yellow, you're talking about a cool end of the yellow part of the spectrum. Or when you, when you make the transition this way, you've gone past the sort of neutral yellow, which doesn't really exist in our paints, into warm yellow. And so this, this has got a bit of blue in it. This, so this yellow is influenced by the blue, so it's, it's bluey yellow, greeny yellow, if you like, but green is blue and yellow. And this one is red, red and yellow, so it's got red in it, no blue. So it makes it an orangey yellow. And then you have orange, which is yellow and orange, red, and this is a warm red because it's influenced by the by the orange next to it. It's got some yellow in it. If you keep going round round or through the spectrum, the red will eventually cool. It will lose any influence of the yellow, and it'll pick up an influence of blue, and you'll get magenta, or deep red, or dark red, or whatever, cool red, whatever you want to call it. It's cool red, most of them. Dark red's not a bad description, because it, it, it most, most darkness is actually given to us by blue, believe it or not. And then you get uh, violet, and this is where, or red violet, this is where the, um, the red and the blue ends of the spectrum meet. And this, this bit really doesn't exist so much. It's kind of, we, we put that in there for, to join the, um, the circle up nicely. I mean, it does, it does exist, I guess, because you can see it, but it's it's the end of the spectrum basically anyway going the other way you've got uh, green which is green yellow is about as neutral as we can get in terms of temperature then it goes to cyan um, cool blue blue which is hopefully neutral this isn't it's probably on the cool side of things and then warm blue and then purple because it's starting to get an, an influence of red so the red is starting to influence this way and the blue is influencing this way. And you can see that blue is influencing up to about hit this point before it turns into warm red. And the red is influencing up to around here where we get the neutral blues, hopefully. But like I say, they don't actually exist in paint. So, you know, we paint what we've got and we can get as close as we can to the actual spectrum colors, which is in fact pretty, pretty close. I'm just gonna have a sip of tea. Here's my tea, here you go. Mm. Yummy. Okay, so let's um, look at what these colours are. How you would paint them yourself. Okay. Um, this one is lemon yellow, which is made from PY3. Um, oh, there's probably on there somewhere. Where is it? Oh, it's Michael Harding's one. So it's it's the the PY number is per, per pigment yellow, just there. PY3. And, you know, there's various varieties or variations on lemon yellow, but if you look for that number, PY3, it doesn't matter, really make, matter who makes it, um, it will be lemon yellow. And that's a blue, green, yellow, or green, yellow, or lemon yellow, okay? That's this one here. This one is warm yellow. And I'm using uh, cadmium yellow hue. You can use cadmium yellow genuine if you want. Um, this is PY73. It's on there. And um, it doesn't really matter um, which of the warm yellows you use, as long as it's kind of more egg yolky than lemon. So lemon, egg yolk. Okay, warm. So you want it sort of orangey. If it's an orangey yellow, then that's fine. I use PY73 because you know it's cheap and it works then we have orange and the orange is a mixture of warm yellow and um, warm red okay if you use um, a cool cool red or a cool um, yellow you're going to be influencing the blue from both ends of the spectrum and blue yellow and red make brown so it's going to make a more brown um, type of orange. So this orange is made from um, warm yellow and warm red. Okay, that, that orange there. And you can make it from cadmium red. 
and cadmium yellow if you like, it doesn't really matter. I'm, I think I've used for this one, actually I might have used cadmium red, I mean this, this is exactly the same, pretty much exactly the same colour. This is um, PR254, Pyrrole red, or permanent red, or permanent rouge de donker, or rouge permanent foncée. It's the names, don't try not to go by the names, okay, because names, you know, different paint, paint manufacturers give colours uh, different names, but they don't give them different numbers because the, the colour index number is always the same. Now that's PR108, that's um, genuine cadmium red. I think that's what that is. Uh, it takes ages to dry, but then for some reason all the primaries take ages to dry. So this is warm yellow, warm red to make the orange. Okay, This is just pure warm red. Like I say, it's either Pyrrhol red or uh, cadmium red, or if you can find one that's just you know, warm red, it doesn't really matter. As long as, it, as long as it looks exactly the same as that, I don't care what it's called. And this is magenta, which is PR122. That's a curious colour because apparently that doesn't exist. Apparently our eyes have to um, have to construct this when this in a spectrum, but that's PR122. It's a little number down there. So, yeah. uh, PR122, fantastic colour, super um, intense uh, pink. Um, add white to it and you get some amazing, amazing, amazing tints. But that's magenta pretty much. Quite a difficult colour to work with. It's quite slippy and it, because it's transparent, it's quite difficult to actually get neat. So if you want to get that really neat, you can have to be very, very careful or do more than one coat. Or you can actually, actually, because it's a, only a, it's only really a diagram, you could add a tiny little bit of white to it. And a, a fraction of white would give it a little bit more opacity and make it a little bit easier to work with. Then we have um, the red violet now we'll get to that we'll go the other way shall we because this is the other way so oh slipping off the table there oh goodness near industrial accident okay so this is um yellow lemon yellow and a touch of phthalo green uh phthalo blue sorry phthalo green there isn't it is it phthalo green anyway phthalo blue which is uh pb pb 15.1 can you see that there there you are yeah right Phthalo blue is PB15, pretty much. Okay, um, doesn't, I don't think it really matters where you get it from, but a good one will, will come out um, super uh, uh, cool blue. It'll be very cool blue. <coughs> Excuse me. Might need more tea in a minute. <coughs> so, the green is lemon yellow and a touch of cool blue. Again, it has to be a cool blue, because if you've got a warm blue, the cool blue is um, blue, yeah, but with a hint of yellow to it, or an overtone of yellow. And um, a warm blue will have an overtone of red in it. So a blue with an extra bit of red in it. It's grabbed a bit of the red part of the spectrum. Now that means that adding blue and with the red and the yellow, you've got, another th you've got three colours again, and the three colours will always try to make brown. So cool blue and cool yellow have no uh, red in them, so they'll make a much clearer green, brighter green. And this green is pretty much 98, 99% lemon yellow. Ta -da, lemon yellow. Okay. And a tiny bit of um, phthalo blue, a, a, a fraction of phthalo blue, literally kind of, you know, the, the, the tip of your thing, just, just kind of touch the blue, mix it in, and it will turn it that bright green. Then you have uh, cyan. And cyan is almost entirely phthalo blue, yep. with a little bit of white added to reveal it because it's a very dark, transparent colour. And you might, you might want to add a little bit of green to it. You might, um, probably worthwhile actually, just to add a little bit of green to it, just to give it that slightly sort of um, tealy colour. Is that right? I don't know. See, it gets so confusing when you try and call something by its, by number, by colour, you know, what was it? We call that aqua, or we call it um, turquoise, or turquoise, or whatever, you know. So, anyway, cyan is an easier description for this. It's basically phthalo blue with a touch of, a very small touch of green in it, and white added to get that lightness. This is uh, phthalo blue again. It's not a cool blue, but this is phthalo blue with hardly any green added to it. Or yellow, if 
you like. You don't have to add, add green. You're adding yellow. That's effectively what you do by adding green because <laughs> this is this and this. So, you know, just bypass that, add a little bit of yellow. Um, so this is a uh, phthalo blue with a, a little bit of white added to it, not so much green. And then this is pretty much pure th uh, phthalo blue. May have added a little bit of ultramarine to it to sort of neutralize it slightly. Um, and probably a little bit of white added there as well. Um, so this is this is as, as neutral as I can get to, to blue. Um, and don't worry about adding white. I mean, you know, that it's, you're not not damaging the purity of colour. You're just making it more easy to see. White is is adding opacity basically. You're not you're not adding a colour. You're just adding opacity into the colour that's transparent. So this is a phthalo blue, ultramarine mix. Um, but adding white to sort of so you can see it a little bit easier. Uh, this is pure ultramarine with maybe a touch of white added to it so you can see it a little, a little clearer, a little more clearly because it's very dark by nature. And then we've got um, ultramarine with a little bit of magenta added to it to give a blue purple. And then you've got um, ultramarine and magenta added in relatively equal measure to give you a warm um, purple or violet and that's got a little bit of white added to it as well so you can see it because red and magenta and ultramarine added together are super dark okay you might want to add some white here as well but but just put it in in tiny fractions okay tiny amounts because you you know you put too much in and it'll make it creamy but um so there there is your color wheel the white i've you might want to add is i'm using a safflower white because it uh, hopefully won't yellow interestingly enough this is a professional range look and it's pw6 and pw4 which is zinc white and um, don't get stressed out about the zinc white there's tiny amounts of zinc white in there so don't worry about that um, but you can use you can use any type of um, any type of titanium white it doesn't really matter Try not to use warm white because because it's add, got yellow added to it, so it's going to influence it. Okay, um, you could use a mixing white or any other white. You like. <coughs> so basically, that's your spectrum, <coughs> and these are the colours that are used to make it. Lemon yellow, warm yellow, warm red, cool red, cool blue. Warm blue, that's French ultramarine PB29, and um, you know, more or less any type of white, but titanium white's good. And I just basically just paint those in, so that's a test of skill there if you see if you can achieve that. <coughs> um, so there you go. There's this. There's the, there's the spectrum. Now you'll notice that in um, each one of these, they are pretty much they have pairs. So the yellow will come in a cool yellow and a warm yellow. The red will have um, warm red and a cool red. The blue will have a cool blue and a warm blue. Right here. Yeah. And it's because of the the, um, the nature of, of these these colours is that they shift in temperature from warm to cool. And then um, when you grab a part of the spectrum you, you grab an, an influence of not just the native colour, not just yellow, you'll, you'll grab an influence of the colour next to it. And when we grab uh, lemon yellow, we're grabbing a little bit of blue um, or green, if you like. And if you, if you grab um, warm yellow from the spectrum, you're grabbing a little bit of the orange that's next to it. Now, effectively, you could say that there are, in reality, there are this colour here, which is orange red, going from yellow to warm red, that's a section. And you could say that the um that the that the um you have you have warm blues here, this section here, and you can have cool blues. And you can split this actually this wheel up into in quite a few sections. You could say that the blue influence on the on the spectrum goes from here all the way around to here because it's blue in the red. So you can see there's a massive influence of blue from there all the way around. The red influence is from, is from here to around here somewhere. The red influence is much smaller 
and the red influence on its own without any blue added to it is from here to here which is tiny you know it's, it's about it's a bit it's about one i don't know <coughs> if this if this is um eight pieces this is maybe two or three two three or four pieces at most and the yellow in fact without any yellow without any um um, red or without any blue in, in it would make this fraction, this tiny, tiny section here somewhere where you know, it would be infinitesimally small. And that's actually interesting because our eyes are very sensitive to yellow, they're a little less sensitive to red, and they're not very sensitive to blue. And so in our mixtures we need lots more, <laughs> in, in the way we see light, we need a lot more blue and red and we need yellow to make, an, to, to make a difference. Um, but that's getting a bit technical, let's not go there right now. Anyway, there you go, there's the spectrum, there's the, uh, the colour wheel, which I said should be, should be more properly one of these, I'd rather you painted one of these than one of these, but this is very pretty, and um, I hope you found that useful.